So one of the most common questions I get when people are considering moving from Ableton to Bitwig is, does Bitwig have groove pulls? And the short answer is no. However, I have found out some stuff to get closer towards this feature that I'm gonna show you in Ableton first that you can do in Bitwig that might actually be more flexible for you. It's got some pros and cons, but that's what today's video is about. So be sure to subscribe if you like what you're about to see. So a groove in Ableton basically is this rhythm pattern that you can apply to try to make it closer towards other drum loops or anything that has a transient. So I know that doesn't make sense, but if I were to play this very simple drum and bass loop right here, nothing has been attached to it or whatever, but we can right click, go to browse groove library, and then we can try something like some kind of swing-ish thing that sounds like this. So we drag it to the pool and then we drag this over to the clip and then we can adjust the settings over here in order to kind of make it more closer to like the hip hop groove. So you can see that it's going to change the way that the loop plays back based off of what you apply to it. And it's important to note that this is based off of a clip. So this groove, if you have a bunch of different things, you have to click and drag into every single thing in this manner. So I'm not really sure and I haven't really experimented with this enough, but what I'm going to show you in Bitwig applies to everything that's on the timeline because it works on the master. So let's go ahead and close out of Ableton here and we're going to take a look at what Bitwig can do. Like I said before, there isn't groove pulls, but if you look over on this button, it's actually a, gro a global groove tab. And if we look over in the play section, there's this groove box right here that allows us to adjust the shuffle, the accent, and then the rate and the phase of all these things respectively. So if I were to pull up, and you have to do this with MIDI as far as I know, but if you were to pull up something, I don't know, let's just do a very quick hi-hat, which shouldn't take very much time, but We'll make something out of face plant. We'll get some noise, kind of like so, and then just something of the sort. Good enough. And then we create a clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 1 16th. So I'm just going to do something like this. Whenever we play this back, if I turn the global groove off, it's going to play like this. Now, once I activate this, if I change this play mode here and I change it to accent and shuffle and phase or whatever, the playback mode is going to change a lot differently. Likewise, if I were to change this over into something else, I can actually change this and automate this on the master channel. So something like the shuffle rate, you can see I can move this over to something here or find a middle ground, maybe something like this where we automate it on and off. And you can see that there's a lot of different variations and whatnot that you can do and you can make it more dynamic and make it change over time, which is really neat. So on one end, a common thing that people might be wondering is, well, I can automate this, but I don't want to have to do this every single time. And so that's where my solution for you comes into play. That even though you don't have a global groove, this is going to allow you to create one. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this sounds quickly. Pretty neat. So one cool thing about Bitwig is the fact that you can actually create custom clips or you can add clips onto any channel whatsoever. So if I were to actually double click on the master channel here, then you can see that this comes up in maroon and I can make this as long as I want to. So because of that, if this little tab right here is activated, that means that the automation that I apply to this is going to be applied to the clip. So what that means is if I were to do something like this to where we play this back, and then maybe I just automate some of the other stuff that we have on here. Let's do the shuffle amount and just kind of do something there that's gonna hopefully be distinct. And maybe a couple of other things on here. We've got transport and we can go to shuffle rate, adjust this, that's fine. And then maybe one more. Let's do the accent phase. And so we can kind of flip this a bit, something like so make it like that, then all of this is going to be applied whenever we move it over. So the interesting thing about this is that because we've activated the groove on here, everything that is within this clip 
say this hat pattern or something is actually going to have that groove applied to it. So if I were to play this outside of this, let's go ahead and just grab this and we're gonna automate that to be off. And then we're gonna automate this one to be on. When I play this, it's just gonna be straight. But if I were to move it over here where we activated it because of the clip, right? Because I can move the clip over, I can move it over here as well or so forth this is going to have the interesting swing. So the interesting thing about this is that you can actually right click this and go into save arranger clip to library. And what that means is that we can label this as groove number one. And then we just go into our library over here, which uh, my camera is hiding this. So let me move this over. We're over here now. But we can go into this clip section and we just find my library my clips and then look we've got groove number one we can just drag this clip into the timeline and as you see here we've got all of our automation so if you are making tunes and you decide to do this workflow where you put all this time into how do you say it like making this custom groove if you're working in midi or so then try to make it a habit of making this into a clip, right click it and save the clip. So that way, whenever you do something, I could pull up this one per se, just throw that on the master. And now this works. You gotta move it Recording over. Recording to logbook. Somebody just followed, thank you. And what's also cool about this is that you don't actually have to, unlike Ableton, apply this to every single kind of clip that you have. The trade-off is that you can't do this necessarily with audio, but it's still a really cool way and a very efficient way to say, if you've got a bunch of MIDI, and instead of going one by one, of going click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, everything that's in that section will automatically have that same kind of groove applied to it. If you add some time shifts to that, move everything a little bit off, then you'll be getting some swingy beats in no time.